Hello. When we think about what's going to happen in the future in higher education, there are some really big questions. And the question I want to address here is what is going to happen to assessment in higher education? Let's start from where we are at the moment, which is that we find that academic staff and colleagues are very hard pressed to get through all the marking. There's a huge volume of work to be assessed, and when we introduce innovative formats, we tend to sometimes find it really difficult to look at how we're going to mark the work. A major problem that we're all trying to address all the time is what might be called poor academic conduct, and that involves everything like cheating or plagiarism, the whole business of how we know whether somebody's work has been done by them. And a whole industry has grown up, including companies like Turnitin, who are trying to do this through submission systems, and all sorts of uh, work has been done in the area. But what I'm going to talk about is using some new methods of technology to help make sure that written work is actually being done by the person who claims it, and in addition can also find out whether the person doing the presentation or answering questions remotely is actually who they say they are. And the technical term for it is called remote proctoring, but the term I prefer is cyber invigilation. Now, there are various companies working worldwide. The one I know best is a company called Uniwise in Denmark. And what they are doing at looking at using retinal scanning and eye recognition to try and make sure that the person in front of the computer completing the task is actually who they say they are. And when I asked them about how they could be absolutely sure that it was actually that person, they said, well, we, one of our testing systems is using identical twins, and we're pretty convinced that we can actually tell the identical twins apart by their retinal scan. So this, of course, implies that assessment is all done when it's written onto a computer rather than handwritten, which is definitely the way we're going in the future. And again, when I talked to them and said in Denmark, well, what are you going to do about the fact that if people bring their own laptops, then they're going to be having all sorts of stuff preloaded or they're going to be able to go online and pick up all sorts of material that would be inappropriate in an exam. And they looked at me as if I was slightly mad and said, well, of course we have software that locks down the computer. And we also have stuff that allows us to whitelist certain sites. When I looked puzzled, they said, well, it's the opposite of blacklisting. You're allowed to use certain sites, like, for example, social sciences databases or whatever, but you're not allowed to use other sites. So using these things, we are getting students to submit work that's legible, working on a keyboard, and think of all the implications that will have for people who have uh, special needs or need reasonable adjustments because they can set computers up in ways that make them easy to read from if you are visually impaired or if you have dyslexia. And then when they've completed the work on their own laptop, they're able to upload it, and then that can be marked fairly readily, avoiding all that terrible, terrible stuff we currently have at the moment, where people have to plough through scripts, where people are writing with pens that they don't normally use from year to year, other than in the exam situation. Their writing is terrible, they're rushing, they're hastily thinking of anything they can to shove down and what we get instead is something that's a bit more readable, thought through and accessible. So if we've got this, the next stage from there for me is thinking about timing of assessment because if we can be reasonably sure that the people who are working on a particular computer at a particular time are who they say they are, and if we're using retinal scanning to make sure that it's relatively continuous, then we can really trust them to be doing this in their own time. And that whole business of having everybody doing all the exams at the same time is going to be far, far less important than it is at the moment. So goodbye to all those massive 
ghastly sweat and smell of fear-filled lecture theatres where they are going to be trying to write answers in serried ranks of desks. Goodbye to all that business of having to give reasonable adjustments for people who can't make a particular time. Goodbye to all that stress of people who are ill and can't make it. They can do it in their own time, at their own pace, time constrained or not, as preferred. With the result that we have much more efficient ways of assessing students, which aren't reliant on them just being assessed when we're ready to do it, and are actually taking place when students themselves feel prepared and ready to be assessed, which might be very early in the programme because they might know a great deal before they start it.